way is suhwa. And goodness is in being in the company of good ones. This is the basis of the prophetic way. It's not based on one's abilities, how smart he is, how knowledgeable, and so forth. It is based solely on associating with those who are near and dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why our Shaykh, Shaykh al-Tariq al-Naqshbandiya would reiterate this reality, also reminding the murids not to rely on their own actions. As Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu when asked, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu are we going to be able to enter heavens with our own abilities, with our own deeds, good deeds, prayers? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us to enter? He said, no. Only through Allah's mercy can you enter. Deeds, you do it because you are a abid. We, we obey, a abid, servant must obey. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if there is no reward, we have a choice, it's our creator. You order, you obey. Even if there's no hell, punishment, you must obey. We're not merchants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used targhib and tarheeb for us to encourage us to do what's right and to discourage us from going the wrong way but the reality is no one will reach Allah's pleasure no one will enter his heavens except with his with Allah's favor and mercy so tariqa teaches you this at every step and Maulana Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what did he teach Sayyidina Mu'adh in the hadith, he say, say, Dubra kulli salat, after each prayer, he say, Allahumma anni ala dhikrika, wa shukrika, wa husni ibadatik. Now you just prayed. Then you're acknowledging the reality. Oh my Lord, <clears throat> it is you who made me pray, who gave me the power. I'm asking your help, your support. Only with your help and and support, can I even come to pray or to do zikr or to do anything? This is a reminder so that no one can say I, that I have accomplished, I have done, I am uh, alim, I am scholar, I am, some people even say I'm wali. Alhamdulillah, the men of Allah we, we were with never made such claims. The Mawlana Shaykh Nazim, Qadda Sassir Al Aziz, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad, the way is the way of humbleness and humility. Regardless of what you've been granted, because that is the prophetic example, the most distinguished. Prophet ﷺ was dressed with the perfection of character in every aspect. There isn't any character of perfection that he wasn't the manifestation of. But, but the most distinguishing character was his humbleness. Because <clears throat> he is who he is and he reached what he reached. And especially now, the story of Isra and Mi'raj not the story, the happening of Isra and Mi'raj. The reality of Isra and Mi'raj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighting for entire creation, showing something about his prophet's qadr. Not everything. His qadr only his Lord knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only the one who, the, who knows Prophet sallallahu estimation. But on this night, he showed something. He 
العوائد in instantly when you read the story when you read the happening of of Isra and Mi'raj what does it mean that at the at the lowest moment in prophet's struggle to guide his ummah when he was abused when he lost his loved ones sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him his angels, Sayyidina Jibreel and Sayyidina Mika'il. And they opened his chest and they took his heart and they filled it with Iman and Hikmah. Ajay. What is this? I mean, we, we read it like this, but but when it comes to Rasulullah Sallallahu nothing is astonishing because of who he is to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But that's how the night started, and then he brought him al buraq and when al buraq out of the was all stricken, Hayba of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so much that buraq was when Prophet ﷺ was about to mount it, he was shaking. And Sayyidina Jibreel said, Uthbud Burak. He said, Be firm, Burak, of Tamaqat. I'm reciting the ma'na in Arabic. Ma rakibaka man man huwa akramu ala Allah min minhu. Yani, the, no one more honored to Allah, more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever rid you like the one who is about to ride you, or there's no one more honored, more beloved to Allah than the one who's about to ride you. So be firm. That's how the night of Isra and Mi'raj starts. And, and then they, they call us, uh, they call Ahlul Tasawwuf, they call us عباد القبور or you pray at the grave sites and at the, in the hadith they stop, one stop Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, Sayyidina Jibreel says pray two rakats, he prays he says, well, did you know where you prayed? he says no he says this is the tree of Musa oh. then he goes Median, he says did you know where you prayed? he says this is Median then where Isa alayhi salam was born, I say birthdays are not important. In the place of the birth of Prophet sallallahu is important. Enough for Sayyidina Jibreel to uh, go, take Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi to pray two rakahs there. Then in the Kathib al-Ahmar, where he saw Sayyidina Musa praying in his grave, he said, pray two rakahs at the grave of Sayyidina Musa. This is with the happening of Israel and Mi'raj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still covers their insight. That they don't understand that to honor that which Allah honored is also uh, venerating and honoring our Lord. Because you are, not, you are respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the things He loved and respected, you are showing respect to that. They say, no, no, we only show respect to Allah. Huh? That's the way of shaitan. Shaitan said, I only make sajda to you. I don't, uh, say, he said, make sajda to my, my servant, to Adam. He says, no, only to you I make sajda. Besides, and he's better, I'm, I'm better than him, so how can you ask me such a thing? Arrogance. Huh? Mulana Sheikh Nazim used to say, one time one of the awliya encountered shaitan and he said to him, Oh, uh, uh, cursed one, why don't, you go, why don't you repent to your Lord? And he, Allah is forgiving. 
think it was Sayyidina Musa or, or one of the Auli, I'm not sure. I think it was Sayyidina Musa because he was Kalimullah. He is Kalimullah. So he says, when you go to your Lord, ask him if you would forgive me. He says, yes, I will ask. Ask Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, the door of Maghfirah is open, but he has to do one thing. He says, well, go, said, go to the grave of Adam alayhi <laughs> salam and make sajda. <laughs> <laughs> so Alayhi Ma Yastahiq, he went to him, he says, oh, say, say, I have good tidings for you. Allah. Forgive me, Allah will forgive you. He said, but we have to do one thing. He said, what is it? He said, go to Adam's grave and make sajda. He said, uh, he says, I didn't make sajda to him when he was, uh, I'm going to make sajda at the grave. Uh, never. al-amr. His, his fate is sealed. There is no way around that. So when you when you read this uh, happening of Isra and Mi'raj, you have to read it as if it is a book of Allah showing to His uh, creation the magnificence of Sayyidina Muhammad. So but you have to read it and see. see you see how he, he, they invited all the prophets in Jerusalem and Sayyidina Jibreel pushed forward Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu to be their Imam. So Imam of Anbiya on earth. Then Bayt al-Ma'mur, he was Imam of the angels. Then traveling to every heaven meeting the, the, the dignitaries of that heaven, meeting the Abiyah residing on that heaven, the angels welcoming him. Processions, processions. Processions of welcoming and respecting and honoring Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu One after another, one after another, until Sidrat al-Muntaha, the farthest low tree. Uh, what does it mean? They say it covers all awalim. It's so vast that all the all the heavens, all the other worlds are, are it covers all of them. And Shaykh Abdullah Siraj Din uh, was saying in his book Muhammad Rasulullah وسلم, that the trees are so big of, of that. Uh, Huge tree, huge uh, leaves on that tree. And it is dressed, it was dressed on that night. It's beautifully dressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Jamal and Tajalli. But on that night, it was like none, no other night. And Sayyidina Abu Asraj Din was saying that on every leaf, there was no place for an angel, uh, one extra angel to stand. It was filled with angels. In that maqam, in that beauty, on that magnificent tree, what were they doing there? Coming to look at the Prophet. <laughs> Imagine the beauty of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad in that maqam. If his beauty was overshadowing other beauties that the angels were coming to see him. What kind of beauty manifested on our Prophet ﷺ? And then he is invited where no one else is invited, even Jibreel alayhi salam. He say, in in an he say. If if I move one further a little bit, I'm finished. I'm incinerated. I I no longer exist. I have no permission. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entering into that presence, entering into that nearness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and intimacy. Ma zagha al-basar wa ma taqa, seeing his Lord. And another 
a sign of magnificence of Sayyidina Muhammad is imagine you are, you've done such a journey and you've seen all these awalim and been welcomed by all these, with all these greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then meeting the Lord of creation, being in his near, in his presence, and then coming back and not showing that anything happened to you. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he says, Unzur ila al Jabal. He says, he says, Arini, Unzur ilayk. He says, let me look at you. He said, no. <laughs> look at the mountain, he said. I'll just send one manifestation, not, not Allah's presence. Manifestation on the mountain. If that mountain stays intact, then you can see me. Mountain was shattered. And saying, Wa kharra Musa sa'iq. He said, he died. Musa <laughs> Your Prophet was in Qaba Qawsayni aw adna id awha ila abdihi ma awha ajayib came back salawat for Rabbi Wasallam and was sitting in the Kaab, uh, leaning on the Kaaba and that one alayhi ma yastahiq Abu Jahl seeing him sitting like that in reflection and sad. How can you be sad of that? He says, I have one face with my Lord and one face towards creation. You think, Mawlana Salman says, you think he ever came back from that presence? Allah. <laughs> he ever came back? He went and said, okay, Allah, bye. I'm, I'm done with this uh, journey. I'm going back. He says, he's never. He's always there. And he has ma'ari. Salawatu Rabbi. But what manifested to Abu Jahl was the face of someone who cares for his ummah. And he's even sad for his enemies. That he, he is sitting there and he's under obligation to tell them about Isra. And he was sitting worried and sad that, on, that they will not accept. That they will be little. That they will, why? For their own, for their own good. So when you read this uh, story, and and you reflect a little bit upon, you understand it is it is a happening to showcase and highlight Sayyidina Muhammad's greatness, and for us to understand something of that greatness. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can understand the full greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu But this is something for us every year to remind ourselves when people tell us, oh, you respect him too much, you honor him too much. Oh, we have not begun to honor him. Mm. We, have, we have not even touched, uh, we have not wetted our feet in honoring him. This is only pretense. Only from what little we know, from our mashayikh, we are trying to do something to show our respect and veneration for Prophet Sallallahu But he, his maqam is beyond anyone. لو ناسبت قدره آياته وعظما أحيسمه حين يلعى داري سرمم سيدنا إمام بصيري. He said, if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala showed uh, the signs of his greatness according to his reality of his greatness. If Allah manifested that in this world, he would say Muhammad to, on a dead body and he would rise. Uh -huh. when just mentioning his name will bring the dead, dead back to life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lam yamtahinna bima ta'ala al Be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered his greatness so that we are not uh, faltering in that trial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and understanding about his greatness and understanding and give us himma to honor him and praise him and make salawat on him as much as we can. 
ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة